into the streets in anti-war protests. I ask, what went wrong that so many governments and peoples around the world now not only disagree with you very strongly, but see the U.S. under your leadership as an arrogant power? I think you'll see when it's all said and done. If we have to use force, a lot of nations will be with us. Iraq will serve as a catalyst for change, positive change. So there's a lot more at stake than just American security and the security of people close by Saddam Hussein. Freedom is at stake as well, and I take that very seriously. Selv de store NATO-lande, Tyskland, Frankrig og Kanada, sagde nej til krigsdeltagelse. Nu skruede krigshøjde deres retorik op med Bush berømte ord. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. Either you're with us, either you love freedom, and with nations which embrace freedom, or you're with the enemy. There's no in between. You're either with us or you're with the enemy. That's that's clear. I will continue to make that clear. Iraks udpinte militær lå allerede i ruiner fra krigen i 90'erne, og Irak blev invaderet uden det store besvær. They've been psyoped into believing that. They believe that we're in Iraq. They believe we're in Iraq to promote democracy. The word democracy, you hear George Bush saying, democracy means freedom. No, democracy equals new world order. Most international lawyers around the world have concluded that it was a war in violation of the United Nations Charter. The Charter allows states to use armed force in self-defense against an armed attack. And clearly, neither the United States or the United Kingdom were subject to an armed attack. Alligevel udleverede Danmark fanger til både USA og England, som begge udøver tortur. Det er i direkte strid med Genève-konventionen. Regeringen slettede desuden vigtige beviser i sagen om fangemishandlingen. Amnesty mistænker Danmark for medvirken til tortur. Der er ikke noget at komme efter, der er ikke noget at undersøge. Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate our freedoms. By sacrificing human life to serve their radical visions. By abandoning every value except the will to power, they follow in the path of fascism, Nazism, and totalitarianism. And they will follow that path all the way to where it ends, in history's unmarked grave of discarded lies. Du, herr præsident, og de forenede stater har mere end nogen anden udbredt en vision for frihed og demokrati over hele verden. Tillad mig at hylde dem for dette.
Anders Fogh. The other big story this week, George Tennant, former CIA director, now making the rounds. He's got a book. Um, you know, I saw the picture of them in the paper from 2003, when Colin Powell was at the UN holding up that vial and saying, this is Saddam Hussein's bad chemical stuff, and Tennant sat right behind him. I always defended Powell for staying in the administration as long as he did. I said, you know what? Better to have one sane guy in the room than none. But I read Maureen Dowd's column this week, and she said, you know what, if Tennant and Powell together, the two guys who knew this was bullshit, had walked out together, maybe this never would have got going. You think that's true? Recently, <laughs> when President Ford died, there was a lot of revisionist uh, discussion about his pardoning of, of Richard Nixon. And in most cases, both Democrats and Republicans got on the talk shows and said, well, as it turned out, it turned to be, it, it, it was a great unifier for the country at the time. The country was very divided, chaos. <laughs> and I think it's really quite the opposite, that when you have a precedent set like that, and you have somebody, George Tennant, acknowledging in his book that he knew that the administration was deceiving the American people into a situation that is murdering young men and women from this country and others, that George Tennant and Dick Cheney and Condoleezza Rice and George Bush et al. should be in fucking jail. Efter 2. verdenskrig blev der afholdt retssager for at straffe krigsforbrydere. Det var regeringsmedlemmer og generaler, der hovedsageligt blev holdt ansvarlige for forbrydelser, begået under krigen. Anklagerne lød på forbrydelser mod freden, deltagelse i sammensværgelse om at begå forbrydelser mod freden, krigsforbrydelser, forbrydelser mod menneskeheden. The charter also allows the Security Council to authorize a use of armed, armed force even if there is only a threat to the peace or breach of the peace. And so the Security Council could have authorized the, the, the armed for, use of armed force. However, the US and the UK argued that earlier resolution by the Security Council had been violated by the Iraq and that they, the Alliance, were entitled to take action in order to enforce the Council decisions. Most lawyers, and I agree with them, would say that no, it's not the individual members that can do that, but it's the council that could do so. And the council, in the council, there was no majority for such an action. So there was really no legal basis for the war. Den omstændighed, at en person, der har begået en handling, som udgør en forbrydelse i henhold til folkeretten, fungerede som statsoverhoved eller ansvarlig embedsmand, fritager det ham ikke for ansvar under international lov. Krigsforbryder domstolen i Nürnberg. Jyllandspostens Flemming Rose, medlem af den hemmelige bilderberg bestilte og udgav de provokerende tegninger. Tegningerne forudsagede, at vores respekterede Danmark nu blev hadet overalt i den muslimske verden, og handel med danske varer gik faretroende i stå. Straffelovens paragraf 100. Den, som ved offentlig udtalelser tilskynder til, eller som fremkalder øjensynlig fare, for fjendtlige forholdsregler mod den danske stat, straffes med fængsel indtil 6 år. <tryk> 